Happy birthday. And with that, Maritza Beniquez becomes the first person in New Jersey to get the COVID-19 vaccine at University Hospital in Newark. We'll have much more on this momentous event in just a moment. Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. It was a big day for New Jersey and a proud day for University Hospital in Newark. But Dr. Sharif El Nahal, the president and CEO of University Hospital, says the real work is still to come. Doctor, congratulations. This was a big week for you. It was a big week for New Jersey. It was a big week for University Hospital. Uh, talk about this week, and you couldn't have picked be a better person, by the way, uh, better than Martiza to get that first shot. She was, um, she was a force, not only when she got the shot and she yelled out, but also at the news conference afterwards. We're so proud of Marie Tulare. Uh, you know, she is a proud Latina American nurse hero. Uh, that's how she describes herself, but that's also how we consider her a university hospital. And you have no idea how much she benefited this community. She delivered her uh, message in both English and Spanish. Uh, she made clear that the benefits of the vaccine far outweigh the risk. And the most important thing she said uh, was that she no longer has to feel afraid to go to work every day and do her job, to enter a patient room, to do CPR, to save someone's life, uh, then to go back home to her family and increase risk of spread to them. Uh, she has to be uh, less afraid to do all of those things now. And one thing that we have to remember is that even though she's been afraid, she's been doing all of those things anyway. And so it's a reminder about how much she is a hero, as are all of her colleagues at University Hospital and really across the country who've been doing this work. Our Phil Andrews was there at the news conference. We have a report coming up, but that was just the first step. I mean, that was just the start of a, uh, an arduous process ahead for the hospital and for hospitals across the country. Talk about what, what you're looking at now down the line. So we've already vaccinated hundreds of people. And, you know, I checked on Maritza yesterday. She's doing fine. She had a little bit of uh, skin ir irritation and local pain. Uh, but the whole point is we have to get uh, ready after we do our own healthcare workers uh, for the community. And we won't know how that's going for weeks to months down the road. Uh, but once we get our healthcare heroes who are the trusted voices of healthcare in our community vaccinated, we want them to be our ambassadors uh, to encourage others to do so. Uh, this pandemic uh, will live or die by people's willingness to take this vaccine. And it's not just some people, it has to be 70 to 80% of the population to truly get the benefit. One thing folks have to remember is that even though they do get the vaccine, there is a still small chance that they can become ill from COVID-19, but they can also contract COVID-19, not become ill because they've had the vaccine and still spread it to others. And so that's why this concept of herd immunity, again, getting to 70 to 80 percent of the population generally is so important because that's when we can finally start to see easing of the restrictions and really the beginning of a new normal when we can get back to how things were uh, with some modifications modifications, of course, before the pandemic. Yeah, doctor, it's, it's difficult to convince the general population to get the shot when you see these polls out that 40% of healthcare workers are worried about getting the shot. Uh, what's it like at University Hospital? Well, we had a similar survey, Larry. We had 50% of folks saying, hey, I'm ready to take this on day one. 25% said we need to just learn a little more about the side effects and what to expect. Um, and another 25% were quite skeptical. Uh, but walking the floors, having these conversations directly with our healthcare heroes, a lot of them said that over the last week, especially after seeing Maritza and so many other healthcare heroes doing this, uh, that they're more willing to hear us out and eventually to take the vaccine. Um, as their colleagues are doing so, as they're seeing so much excitement, and more importantly, as they're seeing the facts about why, for example, even though the science was done rapidly, it is still rigorous and uh, it was done in a way that gives us confidence about the results. As they hear the facts from trusted folks in the community, and that's a key word, Larry, trust. We have to be trusted folks ourselves, hear people out, approach everyone with humility. We are seeing much more excitement and willingness to take this vaccine. Should it be mandatory? I don't think so. I think the right way to do this is to convince people to do it. I think it's a very uh, convincing case that we can make and we're already seeing success with it. Uh, the way that this will be adopted 
uh, is through convincing folks on the merits. And, uh, you know, part of that is recognizing the history of the medical establishment's mistreatment and systemic racism, frankly, uh, against certain uh, populations in the community, Black Americans, Hispanic Americans in particular. And once we reckon with those issues and ask for trust, even though uh, we've had that terrible history, uh, but importantly, contrast this effort with some of the horrific examples like the Tuskegee trials and experimental surgeries that were happening on enslaved women centuries ago, uh, we will be able to make progress. Uh, a mandate would be so difficult to sell and really reduce confidence because if this really is beneficial, we wouldn't have to do a mandate. And so that's the ground that we're operating from. The CDC put, put forward a list of who the priorities are and, and you're dealing with that now, healthcare workers, seniors, people in long care facilities. Next should be people of color, right? Because they are one of the lists, they are, they are on the list of the people that uh, are highly susceptible to this. Well, I think by default, Larry, many of them will be because the next categories on the list, including the many people of color, by the way, who are healthcare workers in our hospital, we hire proudly from our community, uh, are essential workers and folks who are older with chronic disease. And unfortunately, because of the history of systemic racism, uh, folks with um, chronic diseases tend to be much more prevalent uh, in the black community, in the Hispanic community, uh, and in people of color. And also our essential workers are uh, overrepresented significantly uh, by people of color, the people who have kept us going through this pandemic, the people who work in transit, grocery stores, uh, really have kept the, the whole country going uh, through the essential services, firefighters um, and everyone else. And so I think that will happen by default because again, people of color make this country run and we owe it to them to administer this vaccine and approach them humbly and convince them to do so. And you have the Moderna vaccine that's coming soon. Johnson & Johnson's coming soon. AstraZeneca's coming soon. And there's several other vaccine makers that will be ready to go within the next couple of months. All those trucks, just the assembly line of getting, of unloading the trucks, getting the vaccine, in. Are you ready for all this? The logistics are extremely complicated, as you're saying, but we've been planning for this for months, certainly in the last few weeks, especially. We've had close coordination with Commissioner Percy Kelly and a lot of people at the state who've been helping us guide us through, but also Operation Warp Speed. We were one of the first hospitals in the country, one of only about 100, uh, that got the first pre-positioning of the Pfizer vaccine. So we are actually setting the standard and it's uh, both humbling and, and you know prideful um, that we're you know first in line here because we're setting the playbook for the whole country to do this. Uh, that is a tremendous responsibility, but I think we're meeting it, uh, and you know we're optimistic about what's ahead. Congratulations again. Thank you so much, Dr. Sharif El Nahal, President and CEO of University Hospital in Newark. Still to come, as promised, much more on New Jersey's first COVID-19 vaccine when Jersey Matters comes right back.